so trade is a two way street right and and while we are looking to bring in this uh, you know knowledge and best practice into pakistan what would you say what would you say to 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 startups and entrepreneurs what is it that we can give if i would say you know three strengths that the tech startup space has in pakistan for finnish companies how would you yeah i think we're very entrepreneurial um i think you know the concept of jugaad and getting things done is something as inherent to us we're able to figure out solutions i know we keep talking about talent in pakistan we have to develop our talent we have raw talent we have people we have warm bodies we need to get those warm bodies to a point where they're actually contributing and performing in a way that's at a global level and we can do that we have examples of that it's not as if we can't but we just need the right training i mean there are we've been talking you know we've been talking about boot camps and other training opportunities where companies can come in own it understand how they can actually help i mean look at look at markets around us look at india for example and where the iii iits are today from an educational perspective they started with a support from the private sector where people came in and said we're going to invest in this we understand the kind of technology that's needed or the technological and education that's needed in this concept in this context so i think again leveraging the way we think in terms of the entrepreneurial drive um and the fact that our entrepreneurs know our markets really well and know how to thrive in difficult circumstances we see the best kind of founders in those kind of hard markets but then we also need some training we need access to technology where we can then produce and then with the technological infrastructure that for example adil was talking about then we can actually say we're running a company in pakistan and we're not going to worry because tomorrow the internet will get shut down or because we don't have connectivity that we're actually able to offer a standard that is world class i mean i don't think we should be sitting and waiting for handouts and somebody saying here here i'm going to set up a call center in pakistan just because you have people no we need to be able to deliver um and so i think for us we need to be to leverage our people to be able to do that and for that we do need to raise the bar on the on the training side as well i think i will say is that what the what the one other thing that we can do is the size of the market like there is so much opportunity for people that want to be able to tap the fifth largest market in the world pakistan is open for business like come in come to the country see it for yourself see what opportunities there are it's not for everyone it's a high friction market but it will deliver results in the long term and you you will be able to make money off the kind of opportunities that the fifth largest market in the world can offer you but you have to come in understand the market work with local partners um and then be able to leverage that i don't think it's going to happen overnight in 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 terms of industry if i were to say where do you see the most scope you know where what is the lowest hanging fruit here That's a tough one to be honest. I I wish I knew more about specifically around like what Finnish startups and all are doing. Obviously gaming is one one area, but we do talk about infrastructure, we talk about um higher high you know deep tech, but in Pakistan we that's a little bit weak at the moment. I think there there are some people doing interesting things, but uh software when it comes down to you know software and consumer software there is an opportunity. I think we still we are still yet to develop the the business to business the enterprise software side of things. Mm. But if you think about the opportunity again there are a number of MSMEs and SMEs in Pakistan that could be interested in improving technology that they that they're accessing right? And so I think it's coming in and finding that what are you building which market are you building for and what are the problems that you're solving it's not a very clear answer to your question i'm aware of that but i i don't have anything off the top of my what kind of smaller solutions can nokia develop for uh, smaller businesses in pakistan and what can be done in order to scale educational technologies in the country mm. okay so uh, i think one of the question you also asked uh, uh, that which is the area which you think has the low hanging fruit in terms of collaboration right so as we talk that we have lot of resources right and uh, uneducated people or you can say uh, very minimal type of education people have and they 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 are not good in some particular skill right so in my view the best collaboration we can have between uh, the finland and pakistan is how can we bring that education to pakistan right we saw a lot of you know technical diplomas area so w- once i was uh, reading an article right we have a lot of masons plumbers electricians uh, ac and genset uh, technicians but they don't have uh, the knowledge 
that what are the standards being followed where they can go out of Pakistan or even the medical technicians, right? We were just talking of one case, right? So if we just, you know, give them a diploma of three to six months, right? We can enable them to become very productive resources which can go out of Pakistan or which can give online support from Pakistan, right? Because a lot of people can sit here and do things for outside world, right? So in my view, that's the one area. Second is the school education. I think we are still stuck in very old school system, right? Uh, so if we can learn from Finland as, you know, if you look at what primary education Finland is doing and what we are doing, I think there's 180 degree apart, right? So I think we need to learn on that. Just to give you one example that in Pakistan, we have a hub of resources, which what we do, we get the engineers, fresh engineers, we train them on the latest technologies, whether it's 4G, 5G, or any other technologies. And then those resources sitting in Pakistan support complete Middle East and Africa Nokia operations. As well as sometimes when we need, we can send them to Canada, to Australia, to other places, and they do the projects over there. So just by training them, giving them the right education, we bring them to the level which different parts of the world require. Second, I just want to add another aspect. Our, our CEO, Pekka, he always say, there's no green without digital. Okay, so we talked about sustainability. Uh, we talked about, you know, uh, digitization. So uh, when, when we started one of the networks in Pakistan four or five years back, so if, if somebody uh, among you know about the cellular networks, right? So how we improve the cellular network by doing a drive test, right? So a car is supposed to be sent in the field where they have eight or 10 phones with the same, they benchmark different coverages, right? And then they do the drive test and result comes. So the overall process takes four to six months to benchmark a network and change its topology, right? Now what happens with the new technology that now every smartphone person can become a drive tester. And it's not only on, on the roads, right? It's within this room, it's within this building. So you just get the digital data from them and you can plan the whole network in 24 hours and you can change it, right? So this is how technology is changing, right? So this is what we need to do. So for example, one operator in Pakistan, we do zero drive test. Okay, so which saves us fuel, which saves us, you know, all emissions, which uh, lower our CO2, you know, footprint. And I think one uh, other thing which uh, uh, my colleague was saying, so one area where we can do a collaboration is that we have networks, right, in Pakistan. And now the future concept is that all networks should not be kept as closed and we should open them for the APIs, right? And we give access to the companies like uh, they are doing development, right? If, if we go in any developed country outside Pakistan, there's no concept of having cash in your uh, wallets, right? Uh, whereas in Pakistan, we took some good steps like with uh, fintechs, right? Like now uh, our kids don't take cash from us. They just use, if I can take the name Easy Pesa or Jazz Cash, right? They take money from that, right? But still we don't have end-to-end you know, a digital system, otherwise we can be very safe on Karachi streets, right?